I ate plain butter and this is what happened to my blood glucose level. Eating butter, is it a good thing or the worst idea ever? Hi, I'm Dr. Derek Alessi, the High Octane Dad, helping to unlock the superhuman potential inside every father. And butter has had a heck of a history. In fact, if you go back, butter was an essential part of a diet of yesteryear. In fact, if you had butter, chances are you're going to be healthy and you're going to prevent against tooth decay. However, if we fast forward a little bit and get maybe into our parents' era in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and even early 90s, butter was vilified, being one of the things that will increase your risk of heart disease, which you don't want. However, now research proves that butter is indeed healthy and some claim a superfood. But for our discussion right now, my question is, if you eat pure butter, what will happen to your blood glucose level? Let's find out. Now, first and foremost, before we get going, I need to show you the serving size. So the serving size that we're gonna use is 100 calories, which is a tablespoon of butter. Now, in case you didn't know, I wanted to see what a pat of butter was. And a pat of butter is typically a third to a half of a tablespoon of butter. So it would be a third or half of the serving that we're gonna use right now. The term pat of butter comes from the late 1800s, early 1900s, in which the affluent were more likely to have a separate plate just for butter in which they put very small portions called a pat of butter down. Now also too, I've been told that if somebody uses the word pad of butter, they're using it incorrectly. When looking at the nutritionals, it's not that elaborate. One serving size of butter is 100 calories, which is 11 grams of fat. It is zero carbs and zero protein. In fact, the ingredient list is sweet cream and salt. Gonna unpack the butter. Comes out in small cubes, that's really, really cool. It's a tablespoon. It's a tablespoon of butter, not the perfect measuring tool to find a tablespoon, but nonetheless, I think we can approximate pretty closely. Let's cut the butter. And I think this gets us into the ballpark of a tablespoon of butter. Now that I have my serving size of butter, guess what I'm gonna do? If you guess I'm gonna eat it, you are correct. But just before I do so, I'm first going to measure my blood glucose level using my Libra Freestyle. So, with my CGM, my baseline is 92. Tastes buttery, no joke. Tastes like I'm eating butter. Okay, it's been roughly 10 minutes since I ate butter, looking for the change or effect in my blood glucose level. So my baseline that I started from was 92, I'm now 91, no real change. Okay, it's been roughly 20 minutes since I ate the tablespoon of butter. Let's take a look at the blood glucose level. Okay, 91. So once again, really, really nothing's happening here, but we're gonna keep taking a look to see if there's gonna be a latent or secondary change.
Okay, it's been roughly 30 minutes since I ate the tablespoon of butter. Let's take a look at my blood glucose level. And I'm at 93, so I started at 92, was at 91, 91, 91, 93. I've done this before. I wanted to check it again. It's always good to check your blood sugar again and again and again. However, like many times before in the past, blood sugar doesn't change when you have a fat. I know that sounds crazy, but when you're having a fat, when you're having butter, when you're having an oil like macadamia nut oil, olive oil, even bad oils that I would not recommend like Crisco or soybean oil, which are terrible oils, canola oil, terrible oil. So what does all this mean? Does it mean that we should just walk around eating sticks of butter anytime we want a snack? Well, not exactly. There are better fats and of course just having butter, but butter is not as bad as we all thought it was at one point. In fact, even the USDA in 2014 said eat butter. Regarding your blood glucose level and a fat, especially butter, we've shown it really doesn't change. I've done this many times as I alluded to, and whether I'm using butter, whether I'm using macadamia nut oil or olive oil or any type of fat or oil, it really doesn't change your blood glucose level. Now the keto community knows that, and that's the reason why they recommend these super high fat, 80% fat diets. I don't necessarily agree with going that high, especially all of the time. You don't need to. It's unnecessary and a little bit overkill. But just to prove the point, butter or any fat for that matter really won't increase your blood sugar level at all. In fact, it'll stay virtually the same. So please like and subscribe to the video down below. I want to keep making content that's relevant and important to you. And hopefully today you found this very helpful. I'm Dr. Derek Alessi, the High Octane Dad, helping to unlock the superhuman potential inside every father.